Hi, this is a Trout Prophetic Life Ministry, San Antonio, Texas. This is part two. If you're wondering where part one is, look on your YouTube. I hope you are subscribed. Part one is we're talking about the actual uh, prophetic resentment or prophetic dislike or as First Thessalonians 5 verse 20 says, not despising prophesying. There's been a reaction, as those who didn't catch the first one, of course, with the prophets prophesying the election, people began to abandon, understandably, the prophetic because they don't understand it, and they say they missed it. It's very easy, you know, if you're a, if you're a person that prays for the sick and you pray for 100 people and, one, and, and all the ones you pray for don't get healed, only one gets healed, everyone's happy about the one getting healed. But if you're a prophet and you prophesy of 100 people and only one is off color or not right or they don't agree with, then they call you a false prophet. All the 99 does not have any credit for you, which is just a hatred of the enemy trying to stop the words of God. Every book in the Bible, every page of the Bible has some reference to prophetic somewhere. We cannot ignore it. We cannot take it out of God's nature, God's way, God's heart towards mankind. So prophetic is going to be there to stay. It's the understanding and the response and the wisdom and the actual appropriate or handling of the prophecy that is of the great importance in this case. We're getting back to the case of this lady that had a vaccination and she felt very bad because she'd watched it on YouTube. May I please ask all those that are watching today, and I'm glad you subscribed, that you always take your leadership not from a YouTube or a Facebook, but rather from your local church and the Holy Ghost. It's very unhealthy out there to take it from many thousands of opinions. God has placed you into a house, which is a church, spiritual family. That is where you follow and where you are, what you eat and dine and take their leadership, whatever the decision is. God has different ways he deals with each situation and prophecy has its role to play. The majority or the major point of prophetic, that's not my opinion, I'm a Bible studying Christian and I find that the predominant evidence of prophecy is to encourage and strengthen, not give people guilt, shame, or direction of such things with this vaccine. People are looking for vac vaccination uh, situations. Please look at our YouTube called Vaccine. I've referred to it, and I will refer to it again in another one, vaccine number two, because it's become a real issue. I will definitely address it in what I've done and what I've considered and what I feel as a prophetic person, personally. But you need to be following your local church. Now, Whatever you do, a decision you make, it has to, you are responsible. You can blame your pastor, you can blame the prophet, you can blame whoever you want to, but you are personally responsible for your own decisions. That each man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. You can't blame someone else. You can't say when you stand before the throne, when the God asks you, so why did you do that? You can't say, well, Ed Trout prophesied. Because God will respond and he'll say, we'll get to Ed Trout in a moment. We first will talk about you. So please understand that there are principles and ways that God works. And I need you to grasp that wherever you are today in the prophetic, not to be led by prophecy, but not to despise prophecy either. To keep it in a healthy, balanced place. We read in the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 32, we read about a man, uh, two men actually, Silas, who was actually the second companion to Paul after Barnabas, Silas in Acts 15, 32, and his other companion, Judas, not the Judas that betrayed Jesus, another Judas, that's not an uncommon name. The two of them, the Bible says in verse 32, themselves being prophets. So here we are in the New Testament, recognizing prophetic ministry, people fully fledged in the, as prophets. And it says that they, themselves being prophets, said much, to strengthen and encourage the brethren, which tells us that they prophesied and it was encouragement. They were at that church delivering a letter to them from the church in Jerusalem about the requirement or what they felt the Gentiles needed to do to join the faith. And they brought those that letter to them and then encouraged them prophetically. In the next chapter, you'll find in chapter 16, that you'll find that Paul, who is an apostle and was a prophet according to Acts 13, verse 1, First a prophet, then he became an apostle, he grew and matured and added to all the ministry. The ministry is not what you are, it's what you do. What you are is a child of God, and if you're in leadership, you are an elder, you're a spiritual ministry, you're a leader. But you, doesn't, you cannot say, I'm a prophet. That's Old Testament thinking, the fivefold ministry is there to equip saints, all of the same function. So it's what you function in, right? Are you with me? Stay with me. So now we find... The Apostle Paul, who's leading a group in Acts 16, verse 6, 
trying to find the mind of the Lord, and Silas is with him. Just read now, I just quoted you how he's a prophet, yet he did not give any input about deciding where they should go to, to minister. In fact, in fact, what happened that day was that night Paul had a vision, and that's where they made the decision from. It was the leader that God spoke to for leadership. Prophets have their role to play, and a New Testament is to help encourage, strengthen, and to bless the church and work with the leadership of the church. So please understand and get it in perspective. Do not let some prophet on some internet, some function somewhere tell you what to do. You still must be responsible for your own decision making. Don't despise prophesying. Those of you out there, pastors and leaders, if you're hearing what I'm saying, do not let the devil put that into your heart of hating any ministry just because you don't understand. So here's my advice to you. Learn all you can because Jesus said, not Paul, not Peter. Jesus said, strain out the gnats and don't swallow the camel. Strain out the gnats and don't swallow the camel. In our modern day language, don't throw out the bath, the baby, should I say, with the bath water. Let's not become overreactionary, unwise. Let's think of God's kingdom. I hope this has helped you. Please write us on propheticlife.com our website or join us and subscribe tell your friends about youtube we're going to escalate move forward move do more frequent of these youtubes and we look for your questions and your answers we want the world to be informed correctly i don't believe i'm god's answer to the world but i certainly know that i have a healthy biblical church balanced idea of how the prophetic should be and function according to the bible i'm not the only person i don't have all the answers but i certainly have the right heart and attitude to help you become the most effective christian you can be where you are and that god's church may advance god bless you for watching we look forward to hearing from you join us at propheticlife.com as i said we have an app just search for us on your app uh, finder wherever you find your app and we are prophetic life or ed trout spell my name correctly t-r-a-u-t and you will find me I will see you there. God bless you. And please look for the vaccine YouTube and you'll get an idea of what's going on. Thank you.